When soldiers, explorers, and frontiersmen faced freezing nights long before synthetic sleeping bags existed, they relied on one survival principle that modern campers often forget. Insulation isn't about what you sleep in. It's about what you sleep between. Long before nylon shells and polyester fill, survivalists layered natural materials in ways that trapped air, wicked moisture, and insulated their bodies far more effectively than most single-piece modern bags ever could. This method wasn't a luxury. It was the difference between surviving the night and never waking up. The real secret of warmth isn't the sleeping bag, it's trapped air. To understand why this layered trick works so well, you have to look at how insulation actually functions. Warmth doesn't come from the blanket or the bag, it comes from your body heat. What matters most is how well that heat is trapped in air pockets around you. The old military and Arctic explorers knew this long before synthetic gear appeared. They learned that layers of loosely packed materials like grass, pine needles, animal hides or wool clothing create still pockets of air that act as barriers against heat loss. When the air inside these layers is still, your body's heat warms it up forming an invisible buffer that stops cold from seeping in. But when the layers are compressed, such as when lying directly on cold ground or sleeping in a thin bag without padding, the air escapes and the body begins to lose heat rapidly through conduction. That's why in true field survival, the key was always to build layers beneath you first, not just above. During World War II, soldiers on the Eastern Front and in mountain operations didn't rely solely on sleeping rolls. They built their bedding using grass, spruce boughs, and spare garments as a multi-layered base to separate their bodies from the frozen ground. Even two inches of dry plant material could raise ground temperature by several degrees, preventing conductive heat loss. This base layer was often followed by a wool blanket or a poncho liner, then topped with another insulating layer, often a cloak sheepskin or canvas cover. Each layer had a job. The base blocked conduction, the middle trapped air, and the outer layer cut wind and moisture. If you were to recreate this today, Start by laying down a thick base of dry material at least four inches deep. Leaves, straw, pine needles, or even folded clothing. Next, lay a reflective barrier, like a survival blanket or tarp, to prevent ground moisture from wicking upward. Then, build your top layers using natural insulators such as wool or fleece blankets, or even an unzipped sleeping bag used more like a quilt. The idea is to let the layers breathe while preventing direct heat escape. Polar explorers in the early 1900s, such as Amundsen and Shackleton's men, couldn't rely on the compact sleeping bags we know today. They perfected what was called the double wrap system. The inner layer was made of wool, soft, breathable and excellent at trapping warmth, even when damp. The outer wrap was animal hide, or treated canvas, which cut wind and prevented snow melt from soaking the wool. This combination worked so effectively because wool absorbed up to 30% of its weight in moisture without feeling wet, while the hide shell acted like an early waterproof membrane. The same principle applies with modern materials. You can layer a wool blanket inside a bivy sack, poncho, or tarp, and get far better warmth retention than a thin synthetic bag alone.
In practical terms, if the temperature drops below freezing, the best setup is a wool or fleece inner layer, followed by a waterproof tarp or shell, and a thick, insulating ground base. The air trapped between these layers becomes the true heater. When arranged correctly, this system can maintain body heat even at minus 10 degrees Celsius without a sleeping bag, as long as moisture is controlled and wind is blocked. The biggest misconception in cold weather camping is believing that a thicker sleeping bag automatically means more warmth. In truth, if the ground beneath isn't insulated, a $500 sleeping bag will still leave you shivering. Every ounce of warmth your body generates will drain into the frozen earth below. This is why military field manuals, including the Second World War era United States Army Winterization and Individual Equipment Guide, emphasize ground layering before anything else. Soldiers were taught to build bedding pads using spare uniforms, rope mats, or dried vegetation. They even lined trenches with straw to prevent frostbite while resting. The soldiers called it field bedding, and it often made the difference between losing body heat in two hours or, you know, actually sleeping through the night. Modern survivalists can apply the same logic. Even a simple setup, a space blanket on the ground, three inches of dry vegetation or foam padding, and a wool blanket wrapped burrito style, beats most cold weather sleeping bags when used properly. If you're camping or caught outdoors without advanced gear, start with your surroundings. Gather dry plant material, pine needles, dry grass, shredded bark, and pile it into a loose bedding about half a foot deep. Lay a tarp or poncho over it if you have one to keep your clothes dry. Remove any damp outerwear and wrap yourself in a wool or fleece layer. Then seal yourself with an outer tarp, poncho, or even large plastic sheeting to stop drafts. This simple old-world layering trap can preserve up to 70% of your body's radiant heat overnight. The outer shell acts as wind armor, the middle layer maintains warmth, and the base layer stops the earth from draining energy. Soldiers and explorers swore by it because it was quick, repairable, and didn't rely on fragile equipment. Modern sleeping bags rely on compressed synthetic fill, which flattens with use, especially in damp or humid conditions. Once that fill loses loft, its insulation value plummets. In contrast, the layered system is adaptable. You can add or remove material depending on the conditions. And you can always rebuild it with what's around you. It doesn't require perfect gear just an understanding of how heat moves. This is why, even today, Arctic and mountain survival instructors still teach the layered bed approach. It's older than any modern brand name, yet still the most dependable way to survive the cold without relying on expensive gear. The next time someone tells you a sleeping bag is essential, remember that humans survived the cold long before zippers and synthetic fill existed. They used air, natural materials, and layering to build warmth that outlasted any modern design. This knowledge, carried through generations of soldiers, explorers, and wilderness survivors, is proof that understanding the principle of insulation is far more powerful than buying it. For more history-backed survival wisdom like this, subscribe to In the Beginning and share this guide with fellow enthusiasts who value skill over gear. Survival has always been about knowledge 
and the layered trick that beats the sleeping bag is one of those lessons worth keeping alive.